dear loving children welcome to the online class the previous class we studied about uh, what do you mean by poverty we studied about uh, who are the vulnerable groups of poverty we studied about uh, interstate disparities of poverty we found that uh, states like bihar orissa they are uh, some of the poor states in uh, india on the other hand uh, states like punjab haryana they could overcome poverty due to the introduction of a green revolution in west bengal poverty uh, poverty rate came down due to land reforms in tamil nadu and andhra pradesh the poverty level came down because of the public distribution system of uh, grains on the hand uh, in kerala the poverty rate is uh, very less due to investment in human capital development so let us move to the next question what is a global scenario global scenario uh, describe global poverty trends let us find out uh, the global poverty trends Let me tell you, for example, in America, if you have a car, still you may be a poor person. On the other hand, in India, if you own a car of your own, you are considered as a, a rich person. In America, you may own a car of your own, still you may be considered as a poor person. So, owning a car is not the criteria in America. so describe global poverty trends the proportion of people living in extreme poverty has fallen from 35% in 1990 to 10.68% in 2013 in developing countries so you see in developing countries the poverty level has fallen from 35% in 1990 to 10.68% in 2013 from 35% it has come down to 10.68% in 2013 over a period of 13 years not 13 23 years second point poverty has declined in china poverty has declined in china and the southeast asian countries due to rapid economic growth and massive investments poverty has declined in china and the southeast asian countries you know malaysia singapore indonesia cambodia vietnam laos so poverty has declined in china and southeast asian countries due to rapid economic growth rapid uh, quick economic growth and massive investments uh, made in the country the number of poor people reduced in china from 85% in 1981 to 6% in 2011 just to see the number of poor people reduced in china from 85% it was 85% people of people of china were poor in 1981 from there 1981 to it has come down to 6% in 2011 that is because of uh, Uh, a rapid economic growth and uh, huge investments many multinational companies uh, uh, invested money in china because in china there are no strikes there are uh, there is uh, uh, no trade unions no strike no hartal no trade union so cost of production is very low and uh, the companies can make a maximum profit so they invest in china look at on the other hand in countries like india pakistan sri lanka nepal and bangladesh the number of poor people has declined from 61% in 1981 to 36% in 2008 on the other hand 
రెండు కంట్రీస్ లైక్ ఇండియా పాకిస్తాన్ శ్రీలంక నేపాల్ బంగ్లాదేశ్ బంగ్లాదేశ్ నేపాల్ అండ్ ఆల్ వాజ్ రిక్లైన్డ్ ఫ్రమ్ సిక్స్టీ వన్ పర్సెంట్ టు ఓన్లీ థర్టీ సిక్స్ పర్సెంట్ వి ఫైండ్ ద పావర్టీ డిపెండ్స్ ఆన్ సో మెనీ ఫ్యాక్టర్స్ యూనో ఇల్లిటరసీ యూనో దెన్ అన్ఎంప్లాయ్మెంట్ డ్యూ టు ల్యాక్ ఆఫ్ షెల్టర్ ల్యాక్ ఆఫ్ క్లీన్ డ్రింకింగ్ వాటర్ సో మెనీ ఫ్యాక్స్ ఆర్ దే so in countries like india it has declined from 61% south east asian countries it has declined from 61% to 36% only by 2008 so let us come to the fifth point in sub saharan africa in sub saharan africa the poverty ratio has come down from 51% in 1981 to 47% only in 2008 just to see in sub saharan africa the poverty rate has come down only from 51% to uh, 47% only in by 2008 hardly hardly you'll find a 4% only poverty has reduced even uh, now also you'll find uh, many african countries are uh, somalia chad okay uh, uh, nigeria many countries uh, even today you find uh, uh, very poor countries Look at in Latin America, it has declined from 11% in 1981 to 6.4% in 2008 in Latin American countries. Latin American countries are also poor. But it has declined from 11% to 6.4% in 2008. Poverty has also resurfaced in socialist countries like Russia. So the poverty has uh, uh, resurfaced in socialist countries like Russia. where people find uh, difficult to get the jobs there so uh, so that is a, that this is a global trend uh, so all over the world we find that only china has managed to uh, you know decrease poverty from 85% to 6% 5 or 6% all other countries are still facing this problem of uh, poverty Now let us come to the next question. What are the causes of poverty in India? Let us find what are the causes of poverty. Historical reasons. First let us deal with the historical reason. The low level of economic development under the British colonial administration was responsible for poverty. The low level of economic development under the British colonial administration. There was a low level of economic development. What is the reason? You see next point. The policies of the colonial government ruined or destroyed traditional handicrafts and discouraged development of textile industries. The policies of the colonial government ruined traditional handicrafts. You remember, uh, our, uh, you know, let us take the case of uh, weavers in Bengal. The weavers in Bengal uh, were making uh, nice handy handloom clothes. But with the arrival of British, the British uh, forced this uh, weavers of Bengal to sell their cloth only to British people. They appointed Gomastas, British people appointed Gomastas and Gomastas gave uh, uh, advance money to the weavers and they bought their uh, handloom cloth they bought from the weavers at a very cheap rate. And weavers, the weavers got no freedom to sell their, uh, the weavers got no freedom to sell their cloth uh, to anybody else. So they were exploited by the, uh, the British, British people. The Gomastas gave them advance money, they told them to make clothes for them and the Gomastas purchased cloth from the handloom cloths from the weavers at a cheap rate and they were paid low wages and uh, they felt uh, difficult to uh, meet basic requirements of like like a food uh, clothing and shelter so finally i think you have studied in earlier classes uh, the nagodas of uh, uh, west bengal some of them uh, cut their thumb some of them cut their thumb so that uh, they they cannot do weaving in order to protest against this kind of exploitation they some of them cut their thumbs and some of them left this uh, uh, job of weaving and they went to uh, maybe some other village to do some other work 
So the policies of the colonial government ruined the traditional handicrafts and discouraged the development of textile industries. This resulted in less job opportunities and low income for the people. Another reason, high growth rate of population is also responsible for poverty. High growth rate of population, population began to increase. And that was also another reason for poverty. Let us come to the next point, the spread of irrigation and green revolution. This created job opportunities in agriculture, especially in states like Punjab, Haryana and parts of UP. In the 1960s, you will find green revolution was introduced. Irrigation methods were improved. As a result, uh, in job opportunities were created but only in states like Punjab, Haryana and parts of UP. Then, the public and private industries provided some jobs but they could not provide jobs to all those who were looking for jobs. The public and uh, private industries uh, could not uh, give jobs to all those people who were looking for jobs. As a result, many people migrated to cities to work as rickshaw pullers. <coughs> vendors selling their uh, goods, vegetables, construction workers, domestic servants, etc. And they lived in the slums of slums because they could not afford to uh, hire a house on rent. So they lived in the slums. Another one, huge income inequalities. Poverty because of huge income inequalities. There has been huge income inequalities due to unequal distribution of land and other resources. Due to unequal distribution of land and other resources. Some people are landless. Some people have more than 10 hectares of land. Some are landlords, zamindars. Others have no land. Then, another point. Major policy initiatives like land reforms could not be implemented properly. The land reforms could not be implemented properly. They could not take, government could not take away land from the uh, people and distribute among the landless people. So land reforms could not be implemented properly. That is another reason. Then let us come to see another reason. Socio-cultural and economic factors. In order to fulfill social obligations and observe religious ceremonies, people in India spend a lot of money, especially the poor people. The poor people were forced to spend a lot of money for fulfilling uh, uh, social obligations, uh, you know, spending money for marriages and for observing religious ceremonies. There are, uh, every religion has, uh, religious people have their own uh, different ceremonies on different occasions. So these ceremonies were sometimes very costly. Small farmers need money to buy agricultural inputs like seeds, fertilizers, pesticides, etc. So, so they were forced to, next point, uh, they were forced to uh, borrow money from uh, traders, money lenders at a high rate of interest. Small farmers, they need money to buy seeds, fertilizers, pesticides. So, they need to hire sometimes tractors, harvesters. So, they were forced to borrow money from traders, money lenders at a high rate of interest. So they uh, become victims of uh, indebtedness. That is why many farmers of, of uh, India are committing suicide sometimes because uh, they are unable to repay the debt. So they are forced to borrow money from traders, money lenders and uh, uh, landlords at a high rate of interest. That is the reason. Describe the poverty elevation programs of India. The current anti-poverty strategy of the government is based on promotion of economic growth and targeted anti-poverty programs. Economic growth and anti-poverty programs. The promotion of economic growth widens opportunities and provides resources needed to invest in human development. This enables people to invest money in the education of their children for better economic returns. This we have studied earlier. Why do parents spend more money on the education of their children? Targeted anti-poverty programs. First one, Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Act, which was introduced in 2005, provides 100 days of assured employment to every household. So, according to the scheme, uh, every household will get 100 days of employment. Second one, the Prime Minister Rosgar Yojana introduced in 1993 
to create self employment opportunities for educated unemployed youth in the rural and small towns so this was created to provide employment opportunities for educated unemployed youth in the rural areas and small towns pmry next one the rural employment generation program which was started in 1995 to create self employment opportunities in the rural areas and small towns for around 25 lakh people regp rural employment generation program to create self employment opportunities in the rural areas for 25 lakh people swarna jayanti gram sorozgar yojana aimed at bringing the assisted poor families above the poverty line by organizing them into self help groups by providing either bank credit or government subsidy government will give some subsidy government will provide a loan to the banks so that they can start some uh, you know some self help groups they can start uh, something of their own pradhan mantri gram adhya yojana it was introduced in 2000 aims at improving the standard of living of the rural people by developing what all things primary health primary education rural shelter rural drinking water and rural electrification that was the aim of this one to improve the standard of living of the people what are the main features of nrg of act of 2005 it provides 100 days employment to every household to ensure livelihood second it also aimed at sustainable development to address the causes of drought deforestation and soil erosion the sustainable development due to drought or deforestation and soil uh, erosion one third of proposed jobs are reserved for women one third of jobs this uh, jobs are reserved for women the scheme provided employment to 220 crores persons days of employment to 4.78 crore households the share of scheduled caste scheduled tribes and women in the schemes are share of scheduled caste 23% share of scheduled tribe 17% share of women 53% what are the drawbacks of anti poverty programs there is a lack of proper implementation and right targeting second one there has been a lot of overlapping of programs the benefits of the schemes have not fully reached the deserving poor the deserving people uh, people poor people they do not to get uh, uh, the funds there is no proper monitoring of the schemes these are some of the uh, drawbacks of anti poverty programs now let us come to the last question of this chapter what are the challenges faced by our country poverty reduction remains a major challenge we want to reduce poverty almost 26% of our people are below poverty line so we want to change providing proper health care providing proper education and providing providing job security providing jobs to the people providing shelter for home for homeless empowerment of women and weaker sections of the society freeing the country from child labor and caste discrimination these are some of the challenges faced by your country so i want all of you to write down these questions and answers and and learn them and get ready for the next test and after completion of this notes you should send the notes to me through my whatsapp number Nine eight four seven eight three one six four two. So our classes will be on Tuesday, the very next day, Wednesday. You should send the notes to me through my WhatsApp number.